It's getting towards the end of the season and so everyone is thinking about players of the year. Now obviously the usual suspects will all be mentioned, the Erling Haaland's, the Kevin De Bruyne's, the Martin Erdogan's, the Bakaya Saka's, and these are players who are important because they can change the course of a game. But what about the players who change the course of a season? In this video, I want to make a case that actually John Stones has changed the course of Manchester City season and therefore he should be considered as the Premier League Player of the Year. But before we can get to the ins and outs of that, we need to think a little bit about the more recent history of Manchester City. So on the board in front of me, I've got a situation that you will have seen many times on a TV screen if you've been watching Manchester City this season. This is the shape that they adopt in settled possession. So what we have here essentially is a 3-2-5 shape. We've got a situational back three, a double pivot, and then these five attacking players along the opposition. But we can divide this into two units. So we have this attacking unit that we've already mentioned that's running along the opposition back line. And the reason why Pep Guardiola wants his team to get into this shape is because against a back four, you can see there's lots of spaces to exploit here. This is a game against Real Madrid. You can see that Real Madrid are keeping their two centre-backs really close to Erling Haaland. So this is opening out even more space. So the two eights can find the space between the centre-back and the full-back. And then you've got the two wide players hugging the touchline, looking into that channel on the outside. Now this is obviously a really aggressive attacking structure. And so to support that, what we see Guardiola doing with the rest of his players is bringing them closer together into this unit of five. Because in the event of a turnover, if you have your defensive players in a central compact structure, what you're doing is you're forcing the opponents to go into wide areas. Those wide areas are further away from your own goal. And what that means is you're increasing the distance and time it will take for them to get to your own goal. And that is buying you time to get into a better defensive structure. But this isn't just about defensive structure. It's also about build-up structure, because as we've said, we have this attacking unit, they're in a really aggressive position, and what you need is this unit of five players to be able to move the ball from a deeper area into that front five so that they can attack. And actually, if you bring those players together, you're actually reducing the spaces between them, making it easier for you to keep the ball and actually progress it down the field. But it's important to notice on this screenshot that Manchester City are in what you might call a settled possession structure. You can see that they've got the ball between the centre-backs here, they're not being put under a huge amount of pressure by Real Madrid. The big question is, how do you get into to this settled possession structure from an unsettled situation. For example, a goal kick. Now at the end of last season, Manchester City were using a 4-2-4 shape. So this is the lineup from the home leg of the game against Real Madrid in the semi-finals of the Champions League. And as we can see, we've got a really nice build-up structure here because we have a flat four and then two double pivot players. So we've got six players here to build the ball up from this deep, unsettled situation from the goalkeeper. And we've also got the goalkeeper as well. So it gives you a lot of players in order to get the ball, retain possession of the ball, and then move into this more settled possession structure of that 3-2-5 that we saw before. Now the more eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that that front five is actually currently a front four. And that is because we've taken a player out of that front five, dropped them in to help out in the build-up. So the big question is, how do you actually move one of these players out of this unit of six into this unit of four so that we've got a balanced set of two units of five? There's a number of different ways that you can do that. Usually what will happen is that the eight will push up into that final line. But we also have the possibility of a player like Zinchenko inverting, coming inside in between Jesus and Foden and, and helping out in this line as well. And there's also the opportunity here to use your fullback in the traditional way, get them into high wide areas. And you might do that particularly if you had someone like Kyle Walker on the pitch as well. But what you've done here is that by moving one of these players into this front line, we then end up with a situation where we can start moving into that three, two, five shape. The big question is how are you gonna do that? Now last season, what we saw Guardiola do to solve this problem was to invert one of his fullbacks. That means pull one of his fullbacks into the middle alongside the pivot player here, Rodri in this case, and then you end up with this nice three, two structure. Now it is worth noting that a couple of times last season, you would see Pep Guardiola invert both of his fullbacks. So you might see the right back as well as the left back either side of the pivot player here and you end up with this 2-3 shape. And the reason that's done is because it allows you to counteract oppositions with different out of possession structures. But this is still a unit of five players who are nice and compact in the center of the field. They're gonna be able to possess the ball well and progress it down the field. But they're also really nicely positioned in case of a turnover to be able to defend those moments. But this season, Manchester City have thrown a spanner in the works and that spanner is very big, is very Norwegian and is called Erling Haaland. Now Erling Haaland has been played as an out and out striker. So what we've done is we've added a player to our front line and that means we have to remove a player from our build up unit. And that means that we're gonna probably remove the player who is doing that shuttling backwards and forwards between the two units. And we end up with this shape here then. 
So how do we get from this shape to the 325 shape that Pep wants in settled possession? Now on the one hand, what we could try and do is build up out of this flat four shape with Rodri in front of it and move to a situation where you can invert one of your fullbacks and you end up with this sort of shape here. But the problem is, is what we've done is we've actually taken a player away from this build up unit. And so that makes your task a little bit more difficult. Now, another solution is that you could get one of the eights, drop them out into this double pivot here. You've now got your unit of six. You've got more players around the ball. You should be able to progress the ball nicely. But by dropping one of the eights out, you're actually moving against the intention of bringing in a number nine in the first place because last season Pep Guardiola played with two false nines and the idea there with false nines is that you generate space that players can run into to become effective nines in that situation but Manchester City now have Erling Haaland who is an actual nine who's going to naturally occupy these central spaces and what you need then is players to be able to feed him and so by dropping your number eight out what you're actually doing is removing players from around your number nine and making them less effective so you have two options here either you can build up with a unit of five and make it harder for you to end up in your 3-2 shape or you can drop one of your eights in make it easier to arrive in this sort of shape but actually reduce the effectiveness of your striker as well and this was the problem that Pep Guardiola was trying to solve all season, but the problem was he kept running into different hurdles. The first of those hurdles was that Joao Cancelo decided he wanted to leave, went off to Bayern Munich in January. And this is a problem because your two best inverting fullbacks have left, and all that remains are lots of centre-backs and Kyle Walker, who you could maybe try inverting a little bit, but he's obviously much better in those wide channels as well. So this becomes a problem. How do you end up in that 3-2 shape when you don't have the personnel to do it? The first solution that Pep Guardiola found was Rico Lewis, who is a youngster from the Manchester City Academy, a player who has been bred to play this inverted role. And he did a really good job filling in given his age. He's a really good in possession player, really press resistant, can progress the ball forward. But the problem with him is he's quite small, quite slight. And actually, as we've said, this role isn't just about being able to progress the ball into that attacking unit. It's also about defending those turnovers when they occur. So Pep wasn't fully happy with Lewis. We did also see a brief experimentation with Bernardo Silva playing as the pivot player and actually in those defensive transition moments, moving out into the back four as a left back. But the problem with this solution is that you're taking Bernardo Silva away from your attacking unit. And actually as the season has gone on, Bernardo Silva has become really important pressing out of possession in these wide channels as well. And so Pep didn't want to use that as a solution for very long. But actually something interesting has happened here because we've seen an evolution in the way that Manchester City are building out from deep. Because what we were talking about before was Manchester City building up in a flat back four and then ending up with this double pivot in this shape. But actually what started to happen is that we're starting out with two central midfielders and only three centre backs and building from that shape to start with. And why that gives you an advantage is that you can actually end up in that unit of six that we saw last season, but by using the goalkeeper as an extra player in the build up. What does this look like in practice? Well, here's a screenshot from the Manchester City game against Real Madrid in the semi-finals last season. And as we can see, they're building up out of a flat four shape, and then they've got the two players here in the pivot. So this is a 4-2-4 shape. We've got Bernardo Silva here. And what's gonna happen is one of these wide players is actually gonna end up inverting once they've settled the possession. If we fast forward to the same fixture this season, we can see that that same shape is there. We've got a flat four and then a double pivot here as well. The only difference is that we now have a goalkeeper in the center back slot and the player who is inverting has already moved before the ball has been kicked off. And this brings us to John Stones because as we said, Rico Lewis was not considered to be robust enough to play this role out of possession. And so Pep thinks of a different solution rather than thinking of a central midfielder who could drop out and help defend. Why not think of using a defender who can actually push forward and do the in-possession stuff just as well as Rico Lewis. And that is what John Stones is. He's now playing as a pivot player here. He is able to defend, but he's also able to do the build-up stuff as well. Move the ball from that build-up unit to the attacking unit, and he's done it fantastically well. But it's not just John Stones' attributes on and off the ball that are really useful here for Man City. It's the fact that he allows Pep Guardiola to get all of the best players in this build-up unit that he wants. Because if we look at this unit now, we can see that there's now five players who have played as centre-backs within the last year Rodri playing for Spain in the World Cup of course. The defensive solidity of this unit actually operates as a really solid base for your attacking players who can be more aggressive because rather than these eights having to drop in help out with build-up but also defensiveness they can actually adopt these more advanced positions making Manchester City more dangerous in attack. And on top of this by bringing John Stones in as a pivot player you can actually bring in players that really suit those outside centre-back roles as well in Nathan Aki and Manuel Akanji. Both of these players are strong-footed for their side they're also really good 1v1 defenders so you know that they're going to cover these wide areas really nicely and they're also very good at ball progression as well both through passing 
and carrying. So playing John Stones as a pivot player has enabled Pep Guardiola to get all of his players across the pitch in the best roles that suit this system. And we've also got some data to show you the impact that John Stones has been having. Now one of the most important things as we've talked about for Pep Guardiola's system is to make sure that you're not allowing opponents to have really dangerous direct attacks. And if we look on the board in front of me here, we can see that in the games before, John Stones switched to a pivot player in the 40 games that were played, Manchester City were allowing 1.2 direct attacks per 90 minutes. Since they've made that switch, we can see that in the 14 games that have been played, they managed to halve the direct attacks per 90 to a figure of 0.6. Why might that be the case? Well, let's imagine that an opposition player has the ball in this wide area. In the previous system, what you would have seen is the outside centre-back pulling towards the player and the inverted fullback trying to get into this sort of area to defend as well. And that potentially leaves a little bit of space here that can open up if both of the players come at the same time and the opponent manages to get past. In this new system, what we're seeing is the outside centre-back going towards the ball carrier in these sorts of situations. And rather than Stones coming across, he's dropping into that space. So you will end up then with a flat back four in these sorts of situations. So it gives you a lot more defensive solidity as well. Another thing that we can look at is the SBI ratings that 538, the website, produce. This is just a team strength rating that runs through the season. And if we look at this season, we can see that Manchester City's team strength was was declining up until that point where John Stones was brought in and then we see that uptick there as well. So he's clearly had a positive impact on the team. Now, when we think about players of the season, we usually focus on goals and assists and those individuals who've impacted the scoreline. And we often overlook those players who have actually changed the course of the season in a subtle way. But John Stones has done just that. With Pep Guardiola asking him to play a new role, he's adapted fantastically well and actually solved a problem that Guardiola has been trying to solve all season. And because of that, Manchester City are now in pole position in a number of competitions. And for that reason, John Stones is my Premier League player of the season. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.